Once your Unity project opens up, make sure you go to default from the menu at the top here. Um, it changes the layout and it should give you looking something like this. We then want to change the scene name, the default scene name. Um, if it says sample scene, let's change it. So go down to assets and scenes and don't do this in the hierarchy if you do it down here. Single click on the name and you should be able to type over it and we'll call it gameplay or you can call it main, whatever you want to call it. Click in the assets folder though and we're going to create some folders to keep things neatly organised. So we're going to create one called graphics. Uh, try and spell it right. Um, we're going to create um, another one called scripts. And we're going to create one called prefabs, which we'll explain to you later what those are. But they're really important in Unity. Um, Inside this, we're going to put some pictures, so you can drag and drop, or you can um, import them in. I found the easiest way is to drag and drop them in. So, if you find the pictures you're looking for, and save them into this folder, Sorry about the delay. Okay, so drag and drop them in, whatever way you want to do it. The main one we need is a background, first of all. We also need our first guy, which is this little guy here. Um, you may want to add another media while you're at it, but for the purpose of this example, we just need that. Okay. Once you've done that, all you need to do is drag this picture into the scene. Now, Unity works slightly differently from probably the programs you've used up to now, unless you've tried Unreal, and that it has a camera. If I click in 3D view, you might be able to see there that there's a camera. Um, and the camera looks if you look and zoom away out using the middle scroll button, you can see the camera's looking at something. And in the 2D mode, the camera basically is looking at whatever you put in it um, in the 2D plane. So we're going to make this bigger. I want to make sure that this background is bigger than what the camera is looking at because the camera in this case isn't moving. So if we do that and hit the run button at the top here, what we should get is a background in our game. Now sometimes when you run it, as you saw there, the camera actually adjusts depending on your screen resolution, so I would then make sure you adjust it again to make it bigger. Personally, I like to keep aspect ratios in line, so I would, you can go up to the scale on the toolbar over here and you can change it to exactly the same size on the X and the Y to keep it in proportion. That would be my preference, but that is up to you. And if you run it now, we should have a full screen, the, the full game screen should have a background on it. Next we want to add a character into the scene. Again, make sure it's inside the camera view. There's no point putting your guy up here. If you put him up here and run the game, you see what happens, he's off screen. So make sure you put him inside the, the game screen. You can zoom in with the middle button if it helps to get you that, the feel for it. And we're gonna add in this arm, okay. Now, in regards to the arm, the arm should probably be on top of the guy. So if it isn't, which I don't think it is here, let's see. No, it's not. There's a few ways of doing it. One is there's layers, but an easy way within the layer to set the order is to change the number here. So the simplest way is to go to the main character. I would set him as one. Um, if you're not defining different layers, sorting layers, which you might want to do, you could have a background sorting layer and a foreground sorting layer. If you're not doing that, then basically if you have the background is zero, the player is one, and your gun is two, 
it'll make sure that the gun's on top of the guy and the guy's on top of the background. Okay, now the problem is if you move this guy now, the gun doesn't go with him. Um, and we want the gun to go with him. So in Unity you can do a cool thing which is called parenting. So you can take the gun and you can parent it to the character above. Right, and now if we move this guy, they are joined. Okay, now the reason I'm showing that is just to show it's something you can do later on in games. You can actually do it um, when an event occurs. You can pick up stuff and drop stuff by parenting it. Um, the other reason is that you, if you wanted to, you might want to have a game where you could do this, where you could rotate the gun in the game to aim. So having the gun separate it gives you the option to be able to do that. We're probably not going to do that unless you want to get really advanced. Or sl not really advanced, but slightly more advanced. But it gives you that option. Okay, and just while we're in here to get the idea of the toolbar, because the toolbar at the top left is really important. The hand lets you move the whole scene about. Okay, so if you're zoomed away in and you want to move about, that's what that does. And when you come to 3D games, that'll be important. That one is good for moving if you want to keep it in line because it gives you the arrows so you can move it on the X and you can move it on the Y axis by just covering over the arrows and moving them and it keeps them in line. This one is for rotation so you can rotate which I don't want to do right now. This one is for scale it lets you keep it in proportion if you use the white arrow, the right box in the middle you can stretch it too which I wouldn't recommend doing white box is the way to go okay um and the rectangle tool lets you kind of has a bit more freedom to move it by using the circle in the middle and to resize so it is quite handy um and i did not use that last one as of yet that's a new button to me okay